What's up guys and gals, welcome to the Nerd Castle for the first episode of The Long Dark. If you haven't heard about the game, essentially what The Long Dark is, it's actually a game that's sort of near and dear to my heart to be honest, because I, a lot of people don't know this, but I, I'm a geologist and I go out on surveys out in the wilderness and things like that, and so I've studied a fair amount of survivalism and so forth. I was never an Eagle Scout or anything like that, but I've read a lot of books, I've practiced a lot of the techniques, and I've really tried to keep myself from being ignorant when it comes to survival techniques, because the fact of the matter is sometimes... I end up camping for weeks at a time, 65 miles from the nearest town. And so you've got to really sort of plan for contingencies when you're in that situation as part of an occupational hazard. You really need to make sure that you have the knowledge required in order to survive in that situation if anything goes wrong. Like typically you hike in the things that you need and you carry as much water and so forth. Like you really try and be prepared, but what happens, you know, if certain things go wrong in your water supply, something happens to it and so forth. It's things that you really need to think about if you're going to be doing that job. And so this is a game where it's actually just hard survival. There's not a whole lot of things that are trying to kill you in this game. But at the same time, nature itself sort of conspires against you. And this game sort of compiles all of those survival techniques into one neat little package where you're trying to survive long enough to solve the mystery of what's happened in this area. Now, unfortunately, the story mode is not available, so we won't do it, be doing like a whole lot of mystery solving. We'll just be doing mostly survival. And there are hazards. There are wolves and things like that that you have to watch out for that can definitely take a bite out of you, which is no fun because obviously I like all of my bites right where they are right now. But let's go ahead and start the game on Sandbox. I'm going to go with a female survivor. We'll just sort of talk about things as we go along because I've, I've really been excited about this game. A while back, I heard a Kotaku. I read a Kotaku article. You, you, don't, you don't hear an article. But anyways, you read it. And so in reading the, the Kotaku or whatever it was, I might be pinning the tail on the wrong donkey here. But on reading the article, I remember the author was saying how boring it would be to play a pure survival game where there's no zombies, or there's nothing trying to kill you, and there's nothing trying to destroy you. And I remember fundamentally really, really disagreeing with that statement because survivalism is really sort of one of the ultimate tests of a human being. It's kind of one of those things where it's your brain against the wilderness. And so I feel like that's a very, very interesting experience and being able to simulate that so that people can see what it's like and maybe spark, you know, some sort of infatuation with nature and just being out there in the wilderness. It's a good thing. I like being out in the wilderness. I love getting away from society every now and again and just spending a couple weeks out in the desert or out in the forest or out in wherever. And I don't like campsites. I tend to just hike into wherever, you know, like national reserve land or something and just like be out there. And so I always thought that that would be really interesting, but maybe I'm sort of a limited audience. So a mysterious geomagnetic storm has brought your plane crashing down into the northern Canadian wilderness. How long can you survive? That seems sort of unlikely, but I suppose... Eh, I don't know. I did a thesis paper on geomagnetism. I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure. No list of things to be done. The day providential to itself. The hour. There is no later. This is later. All things of grace and beauty such that one holds them to one's heart have a common provenance in pain. Their birth in grief and ashes. Cormac McCarthy. The road. Okay. Alright. And so essentially what he's saying right there is that all of those things that you put off into the distance, they are now when you're trying to survive. You handle them now or you die later because there is no later for you. And that's a very realistic way to think about the wilderness. In fact, there are things to be done. There are things to be reckoned with. And if you don't do it, well, you may not make it through the eve. It is 12 o'clock p.m., okay? It feels like 10 degrees. So we're actually at... Uh, we're below freezing right now. We've got a dead animal carcass over here. And I'm going to do my best... That's not good. That's actually... Oh, hell. No, we've started out with a wolf right up our ass, unfortunately. And so hopefully the wolf doesn't know how to climb. If he does, this may not end well for us. This may be the slow... This might be the quickest death that I've ever faced in this game. Hopefully he runs off somewhere. No, he's outside over here somewhere. Little bastard. Alright, well, we're at a deer trail right now. The game does randomly spawn you around the map. And it spawns you around random supplies as well. So sometimes you'll check the same location. So for example, this deer hut right here, this deer tower, had beans and stuff in it the last time that I played. This time it doesn't have anything. So you just... Uh, uh, crap. Let's fight him. Did we kill him? Oh, hell. Okay, so we are bleeding, which is going to attract other animals. We need to jump into first aid. We need to apply a bandage here. Let's go to our equipment. And we start with a whole bunch of equipment just in case something like this happens. We're going to use the band-aid, and the other thing is that, unfortunately, we have an infection risk right now, and so we need to throw an antiseptic I'm on that. Sure I'm gonna make it. If we don't throw an antiseptic on that, unfortunately, it's going to be very, very bad for us, and so we've thrown an antiseptic on it. We've got a wolf carcass over here, which, unfortunately, we don't have any of the tools we need 
in order to gut it or get any of the hides off of it. So that's unfortunately going to be something that's going to be just kind of a waste of the wilderness. But what we need to do is we need to find ourselves a location to crash down. Looking at these bars, these are all the things that we need to worry about right now. you got fatigue, cold, hunger, thirst. And the two places that are really going to test the modern survivalist, if you will, the two things is going to be the tundra and the desert. Those are the two absolute worst places you will ever have to attempt to survive. And those are the two places that will end with your death the most easily if you don't handle the fundamental things that need to be handled. Now, my experience is almost entirely in the desert. I spent about two to three months in the desert just camping, surviving, doing your thing, drawing out maps because that's what geologists do. I think I hear another wolf, unfortunately. And we cannot survive another wolf. It will not be something that will go well for us. So being chewed on within the first couple seconds of the episode is a really, really bad thing for us. In case you didn't know, being chewed on by a wolf, I prefer to keep all my bite-sized bits upon myself. I don't like them to be transferred over to any other creature who's also trying to survive. That totally sucks for me, and while it's beneficial to them, what's good for the orca is really, really bad for the penguin. And vice versa, so... You know, all things considered, I prefer to keep my bits and pieces all arranged where they're at right now. And being bit does not... Yeah, it's not good for us in the future. So we've got our caloric use per hour right here. We've got how many calories we have on us at the moment. So apparently we had like a big pancake breakfast or something before we jumped on out into the wilderness. You know, every now and again, my uh, my granddad used to fly kind of a... Ooh, my granddad used to fly a wilderness plane. And so we used to have big breakfast. That's one of my memories as a kid as he flew a little kit fox. He also had like a Cessna and so forth. And you fly out in the middle of nowhere, but you'd eat big breakfast. For example, we'd, we'd fly out to Williams, I think it was. There's a little airport out there, and we would have a breakfast, and then we... Oh, hell. Son of a bitch. We got a wolf up on the bluff right there. Hopefully, he's not able... Let's go ahead, and I'm going to cross over to this side just to put as much ground in between me and him as possible. We do have flares. We do have some things in our inventory right now that m might help us should we catch aggro. Unfortunately, it's not much. It looks like we have a little bit of a... Oh, okay, okay. I know where we are. I've actually, the map is the same every single time, and so if you play the game a little bit, you will get a feeling for where you're at and how you can survive. I know where we are right now, which puts us one up on any other situation, so luckily I've kind of got a feel for it. There's a wolf over there. We don't have a firearm. There are guns in this game. There are things that you can collect that can help you survive, like guns, knives, and so forth. You're not going to be fighting with a knife or anything. It's going to be a drop point hunting knife, which is used for gutting and skinning animals, but gutting and skinning can lead to getting nice things off the hides, nice things off the body, which you can use for survival survival later on whether you're cooking the meat or you're using the hides to reinforce or repair your gear which is also a possibility that over there is a ski lodge and so we're going to hit that in just a minute that's going to be the last place that we go but while we're already out and over here what i'm going to try and do is i'm going to try and hit all these fishing shacks essentially all of these are if you don't live anywhere that has snow for example if you're like me and you live a place in a place where there is no snow did i say snow you live in a place where there's no snow i live in a place where it never snows the last time it snowed was like 1983 and it was only like two inches and these are fishing shacks. You basically, well, most of them have a hole in the bottom. In fact, there it is right there. There's a hole. You saw a hole right there, and you just drop a line down in. And that's how some people spend their time. You just kind of live in these little shacks out in the middle of the water, and it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I've never done it, but I would like to someday. It seems like one of those things that would be really, really sort of a unique experience. We've got some basic ski gloves right there. This is going to be nice. Hopefully those will help us survive a little bit longer. We've got a pair of jeans that are a little bit worn down, a little bit threadbare, so I don't think that's going to be that helpful. Every piece of equipment in this game has a percentage rating. I think I just heard another wolf. Or is it that one that's way over there? I don't know. Either way, I don't like this. There's a potbelly stove in here that we can use. Unfortunately, somebody seems to have taken the door off its hinges. Usually, these are actually fairly airtight because you sleep and whatnot in here, as far as I understand. They're a little bit bigger, too? I don't know. They usually have, like, a cot inside. In Ooh, mittens. Okay. There we go. Let's get our fingers taken care of. So we're wearing basic boots. We're wearing basic gloves. However, this is going to act as the padding. What we really want to do right now is we want to put on, let's see here. We want to put on those mittens because I think those are going to be an outer covering. Warmer than gloves and better than nothing. Oh, actually, it takes off the gloves. Okay, so in my experience, I've seen that you can take basic gloves and then you can put mittens on over the top of them. But maybe they're thinking about these... Oh, these are ski gloves. Okay, so that explains it. They're not like the little, um, I don't even know what to call them. There's like these cotton gloves that act as sort of a liner before you put them into mittens when you go out on, you know, longer treks out into the snow. I used to go skiing and snowboarding all the time, but that's about the extent of my winter experience. I couldn't honestly tell you, ooh, we're a little bit cold right now. Once that tops out, we're going to find ourselves in a bit of trouble. So what I would probably recommend is that we find a place to bed down for a bit. It looks like there's some kind of... 
I think those are probably just lodges for like tourists or something like that so that you can go out and ski for a little bit I don't really know. This seems to be some kind of resort. We've got painkillers. Okay, that's good. I'll take them Get ourselves some olive or whatever it is. We've got another bandage to replace the one that we already used. We've got pork and beans right there. Oh, we've got pinnacle peaches. Okay, and so that's going to be about 800 calories. That's actually almost a quarter of what we need to survive an entire day in this situation. Assuming that we're not doing a whole lot of strenuous activities. We've got a tin of sardines, some nuts and bolts, and some random pieces of scrap metal. It's looking pretty good for us right now. It's looking pretty good. Assuming that we can get to a location where we don't freeze to death. So we're pretty cold right now. Our condition's really, really bad. And so what I would highly recommend is that we sprint our way across the ice. Hopefully it's not too thin. I'm not experienced in this situation. I don't really know how to judge ice as to whether it's thin enough to not walk on or whether it's thick enough to walk on. Not something that I know how to do. But I do know a good thing when I see it. And being able to scavenge off all these locations is probably... Ooh, there's another wolf over there. Lots and lots of wolves around, as my cousin used to call them. Lots and lots of wolves. Let's go ahead and, since we're about to redline on our heat allotment, what we need to do right now is we're freezing. So our condition is going to start to drop pretty rapidly. What we want to do is jump into one of these cabins, and we're just going to hang tight for a little bit. Or hang loose, whichever. Both seem to be pretty good. I mean, if you're a Hawaiian, hanging loose would be the better way to go. But if you're just about, if you're from the mainland, you know, hanging tight would be what you would want to do. So we're inside here, and we're going to be a little bit warmer, but I can't guarantee that this is going to allow us to survive in any respect. However, there is a winter coat right here. The gear in this game seems to be randomized in the location where it's put. And so a quality winter coat, good wind resistant shell, and synthetic insulation for those who love the outdoors. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So what we want to do right now is we're wearing long underwear. Is that all that we have? No, we have jeans on, long underwear, mittens. Okay. So let's throw this on. Because this is going to be a major, major part of our survival strategy. You have to have an outer shell. If you don't have that, you're done for. And so I think it feels like... Oh, good. It feels like 43 degrees right now. Fantastic. We're getting back up into non-hypothermic ranges. We're not quite there yet. I think... prepared for anything. I don't know what we just picked up. I wasn't paying. I think it was kerosene. But anyways, the thing is you want to get yourself up above 60 degrees, at least in a real survival situation, because a lot of people don't know this, but you can freeze to death in like 65, 70 degrees if you stay in it long enough. It will drop your body temperature, and that's very, very bad for you. It looks like we are dropping pretty quickly, though, on our cold meter, so that's good. I know you can't feel your hands. Hang in there. Rub them together or something. There's no stove in here, however, though, which means that for long-term survival, this is not going to be an option. We need a place where we can build a fire. And so we're going to jump back out into the out of doors. We're going to check some of these other locations. Now, typically, you would want to avoid sprinting in this situation. The game tends to simulate that by making your caloric, or I'm sorry, yeah, your caloric value drops really, really rapidly when you're running. But the reason you wouldn't want to run out in the snow is actually if you're in a survival situation, sweat's going to be your enemy right there. If you're sprinting around in the snow, what will happen is that you'll sweat in inside of your snow gear and when you sweat inside your snow gear any amount of water the application of water really 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 diminishes the efficiency of any sort of warmth holding shell the moment that it becomes wet it gets much much worse at holding water and it allows the cold in and so what you want to be careful of in that situation is in fact you want to strip down if you're going to be out into the cold and you're going to be working or chopping wood or anything like that and you're in a survival situation what you're going to want to do oh it's a mid layer good we just got ourselves a synthetic fleece which can go into our mid level right here so we're gonna wear that yeah so now what are we up to we're up to 43 degrees so that didn't actually help us that much I think our clothing worth bonus we're getting plus 13 right there we're doing all right but still we don't have all those things we need to survive but as I was saying sweating is gonna be your big enemy so what you'll see in a lot of cases some people strip down to just their you know their snow pants and their mucklucks or whatever it is that they're wearing and there's two different types of mucklucks I don't remember the kinds but there's like a seal skin variant and there's a non seal skin variant the seal skin variant is meant to keep out water and the other one one is called a muckluck and the other, there's two specific names for it and I don't remember what it is honestly I'm not experienced with like snow survival if you get me in the desert though I'm usually pretty good Let's see here, aside from, you know, finding water and all that fun stuff. We've got some beef jerky right there. That's going to be fantastic for later. We have to have that. A plastic container over here. Newsprint. Actually, that's a good thing. While you might be saying, why the hell do we care what's going on in the news, we don't. We actually really, really, really don't. But what we do care about this as is Tinder. I've actually found that in this game, it's harder to find Tinder than anything else you might need. We've got a can of soda right there. She needs first aid soon. Why? We've applied first aid and so forth. We should be fine. Well, our cold rating is dropping, so that's good. I don't think there's any... 
Oh, we can crouch down. I didn't check under the beds in the other places, so maybe we want to do that too and see if possibly we can track down anything that might be hidden underneath the beds. We hit all three of these cabins, and I'm not seeing anything that's jumping out at me as being incredibly useful. Instead, what I might recommend... Let's hit this cabin over here. I'm going to try and sprint on over there, and you'll see down in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll notice that my calories are going down very, very rapidly. We need to find ourselves some way to hunt. We need to find ourselves like a dagger or a knife or anything of that type so that we can start butchering some of the bodies that are out here. I've got a pretty good feel for where we're at right now on the map. If we head back that way, there's a ski lodge. If we head off that way, there's going to be a cave with some dead bodies and so forth in it, assuming that they spawn in the same spots. Actually, my eyes are playing tricks on me over here. I thought I thought there was a cabin, and in fact, there was not. So what we want to think about right now is let's go back to the ski lodge, and we'll pick this thing clean. We've hit all those cabins over there. I'm trying to rationalize in my head right now. What you want to do is if you're in a survival situation, you want to start thinking with regards to landmarks and paces or amount of time. If you've got a clock with you, you can talk about it in terms of how long it took you to walk in between one location and another. That's an old surveying trick that you used to use if you didn't have a compass or anything on you and you couldn't tell you're facing. And since the map has not been implemented in this game right now, that's going to be something that you really kind of want to practice along the way and figure out because if you you can get lost in this game and getting lost is really, really bad, especially if you do it in the evening where at any moment it could just drop in temperature and you could just die basically instantly. You want to watch out for that. So let's go back over here. I'm going to try and skirt the edges of the lake as best as I can. And we're going to be able to melt snow. We're going to be able to do all kinds of fun stuff in order to survive in the future episodes. But for right now, what we really want to focus on is just getting back to some kind of shelter. It does look like we do have a lot more heat retention going for us right now. As we saw before, it felt like it was, I think, 2 or 3 degrees. Now it feels like it's 18 degrees, so we're doing a little bit better. It's going to help if we can find ourselves a beanie or some kind of ear covering, some kind of eye mouth covering, a bandana, just about anything that can cover up your nose and extremities, keep them from freezing off and so forth. But our survival kit is coming together. Now, what you want to watch out for is this gear is degrading as we play the game. And I'm not going to show you right now because we're actually, the time is running. There's no way to pause this game. The time runs whether you're working or not. And so I'm going to try and keep myself moving during the duration of this playthrough. But what you may find is that your gear breaks down on you. And so as you go along, your coat is going to break down. You're going to need to sew that. You're going to need to get it back up to less than threadbare quality in order to make sure that you survive. And so these are all things that you have to think about along the way. Do you wear that really thick coat while you're out in the middle of the wilderness? Or do you leave it behind and kind of risk freezing and save it for a colder day? Let's go on inside to the hunting lodge right here and see what we can find. So this is going to be the, I think this is like a ranger lodge or like a ski lodge or something. I'm not really sure. It seems like the kind of place where you go to meet up with the park ranger and be like, Yo, what's up, man? I want to schedule some... I want to schedule some scheduled activities or something. We got some antiseptic here, a bottle of hydrogen peroxide. Damn, is that going to hurt when it hits the wound? We've got accelerant over here, so that's going to be kerosene or something. Oh, lighter fluid. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. We're going to need that for later. Use that old engine trick to get the fire started if nothing else works for us. Nothing in the drawers, unfortunately. Do we have anything in... Okay, so we got painkillers. And that's going to be it. And so let's rifle through this thing's drawers. It won't mind. This desk is a whore. I'm going to rifle through there. And once we get done with the desk drawers, we got a set of basic gloves. Not going to be that useful to us, to be honest, because we got something better right now. We've got reclaimed wood, and so it's just kind of like busted pieces of a crate or something. But we're going to need that. That's fine. We need that in order to make the fire work for us. We need to get enough firewood in order to last through the night. And we also need to get enough firewood to where we can boil our water and where we can cook meat if we need to. Now, I don't think we're going to find a whole lot... up somehow. I don't think we're going to find a whole lot of useful things in here, unfortunately. This place... The few times that I've played the game before, this place has never supplied me with anything that I 100% needed to survive. It's all just been sort of ancillary gear. It's been like extra stuff, kind of tertiary gear that's, meh, sort of useful, but not really. We've got kerosene in here. Okay, that's fine. Got a bandage. We've got pork and beans. And so the total amount of calories that we found for the day is somewhere around 1,500 or so, which is a good thing. That's actually a really, really good thing because if you go to sleep too hungry, this game actually like kills you really rapidly. And of course, a can opener. If you're going to have a whole bunch of canned goods, can't make it very far without a can opener. We've got a storm lantern, a windproof storm lantern with mechanical igniter. It burns kerosene. Okay. I suppose that might be useful if we find ourselves navigating under the cover of darkness. Although, honestly, in the interest of keeping ourselves alive, my number one recommendation to you in any situation if you're trying to survive the cold would be do not go out in the middle of the night. We've got a summit soda over here Step that we're going to pick up. Andy. And so that's going to put us up to maybe 1800 calories or so. I think we picked up another can of soda that I forgot to talk about or I forgot to include in my tabulation. So 
arithmetic it's so much fun and then you get to algebra and then you get to trigonometry which i think is the most useful of mathematics yeah calculus reasonably useful algebra pretty useful but trigonometry i can't do my job without trigonometry and so trigonometry is the thing that I find myself falling back on just time and time again as a geologist. Just loads and loads of triangulations. Let's get down in here, and we've got nothing in the drawers. Okay. So that leaves us in a little bit of a precarious situation. It's 3.30, and the thing about 3.30 is that it's close enough to nightfall where I don't really want to go out on any major excursions right now, but at the same time, I don't want to bed down either because obviously... We've got to keep ourselves stocked on wood, and so what I think I'm going to do is let's go outside and let's forage for wood with the last couple hours, and then we'll see if we can make it through nightfall. And if we make it through the evening, what we'll try and do then is I'm in the morning... First aid soon. You're not going to need first aid soon. I already gave you first aid. You'll be fine. And so, yeah, the sun is dropping on us right now. It feels like 32 degrees, and so before it was reading us about 40 degrees, we're already losing what limited heat the sun is giving us. is already falling off, unfortunately, much like my toes if we get any colder. And any other, you know, pokey part of my body that... No! Wolfie! Go! No, no! Back to the cabin! Back to the cabin! Wolfie! You stop that, right? I will shoot you. I don't have a gun, but believe me, I am coming for that ass if you aggro me right. Stop it, Wolfie! Wolfie! You cease your shenanigans, Wolfie. You cease it right now. Oh, hell. Back in the house! Eh. Why does this place have so many wolves? God. Are there really this many wolves in Canada? That's terrifying. There's a lot of are there a lot of these? I mean, I've camped in places where there's timber wolves down in like Arizona and so forth in the White Mountains, but are there really this many wolves in Canada? Canadians, you need to enlighten me as to whether you have like wolves wandering the street of Montreal or something. This is terrifying. This is awful. Let's uh get the potbelly stove up and running, I guess. We've got one tinder plug, we've got a couple of newsprint, we have skill at starting fires, and so there is the possibility that this just might not work for us. We've got three accelerants. If we really need to get the job done, we can throw some accelerant on top of it. We unfortunately didn't get any wood from this, so I may try and... Let's sneak out the back door, possibly. Because the thing... God damn wolves. Get out of here. Did we kill it? Oh, no, we ran it off. Okay, so we got blood loss right now. Let's apply another bandage. God, there are wolves everywhere in this game, just killing the hell out of us. And we've got antibiotics. We have to, we've got antiseptic, I guess. We've got to use it. I mean, we don't have a choice right now. We have to let that go. And then what I want to do, anyways, what I've been trying to do, if the wolves will allow me, is we need to forge for wood. And so what time do we have right now? It's almost 4 o'clock. Alright, so let's go for two hours that we'll search for wood. And we'll just forage for a bit. Hopefully wolves don't come back. I mean, I've never had this many problems with wolves so far in the past. I've never seen this many wolves around. And so we got cedar firewood. That's it. That's all that we got. Oh boy. Alright, well if that's all that we got. I heard another wolf. We need to go. I mean, that was my stomach. I don't know. It was either a wolf or it was my stomach, and I'm not going to take the time to figure out which it was going to be. Everything's all blurry right now, so let's just start a fire. We've got enough wood for a little while anyways. Not much. Let's go for it. Using an accelerant might be the smarter idea, but as of right now, we just need to survive for as long as possible. We may not even survive the first second episode if it keeps going like this. I mean, we'll find out, I guess. Come on. Okay. And so we were able to start the fire. What we want to do now is we want to think about... We're going to add that to the fire. So we've got one hour's worth of fire left. Let's go ahead and let's melt a half gallon of snow. And then maybe boil a half gallon as well. That shouldn't take that long, I don't think. I could be wrong, though, I guess. I don't know if I've ever boiled a fire over... I think we're out of wood, too, so unfortunately, because we don't have the supplies we need, very, very shortly, we're going to find ourselves in a very, very bad situation where we've got to sleep all night and just hope that we don't freeze to death. I'm going to start eating our meal for the day. 
And what I would recommend is maybe... Let's eat the pork and beans. Our can opener is degraded, unfortunately, and so that's just something that we're going to have to deal with. When we run out of our can opener, we're going to have to go find another one. We've got... I'd really love to space this out a little bit further, but let's just eat the beef jerky. And hopefully we recover overnight. That's the only other thing that I can think of, is that maybe we recover overnight. We should have some water around here now, I think. We have potable water. Good. And so let's just drink a bit of that to see how long half gallon of water in this situation might be enough to get us by, but your average human being, you need about a gallon of water a day if you're in a high-stress situation where you're kind of like doing a lot of activity and so forth. Oh, good. It only costs us like a fifth of a gallon, so that's fantastic. Good, good, good. I wish... You can swap things around from either metric or imperial. I wish I could leave the temperatures in imperial, but have all of the other measurements in metric. It's just because I don't feel like doing the, I don't know, the 9 14 14 over 9 conversion in my head, plus and minus 32 and so forth. I just don't feel like doing arithmetic right now. I'm going to be really honest with you. I'm feeling super lazy. So we're out of fire now, which means that we are going to start getting colder. Our hunger is still the number one problem that we're looking at right now. And so I guess we'll eat a bit more. I'm going to save the sodas for when we get thirsty. I guess I'll go for the pork and beans right now. We'll just try and get ourselves stocked up. Maybe have like 2,000, 3,000 calories waiting for us. And so there it is. We've eaten our beans as disgustingly and as loudly as possible. That puts our hunger a little bit lower. I don't really know what it's seeing as a normal caloric use in this game. I think it's probably aiming for like 2,500 a day. But we're getting sleepy now, too, so let's go ahead and eat the pork and beans. And the game does allow you to smash open cans, which is really nice. You don't have that DayZ situation where you're running around looking for a can opener the entire game, trying to figure out how you're going to keep from starving, but that's good. You can actually smash the can on a rock, just monkey boat that bastard open if you really need to. Let's crash for the night. I mean, that might be our best option right now, so let's go for it. I would say we should probably... Let's go for, that's going to put us at 5 a.m. Let's go for that right there. And hopefully we don't freeze to death in our sleep. That's what I'm really worried about, is that we might freeze to death. Hopefully we heat. Okay, so we've survived 16 hours and 53 minutes. Fantastic. Do I get to play the game now? That's sort of weird. Hold on. It's not like loading the visual aspect of the Hold on. We can I can fix this. Reload my game. I'm not sure I'm going to make it. Or is it nighttime right now? Let's whip out a match. Oh, it's nighttime. Okay, so it's pitch black. Okay, so that explains it. We may in fact want to Okay. So never mind. I thought maybe it didn't load like the visual driver or something because, you know, indie games and so forth. Let's go ahead and rest for a couple more hours until the sun comes up. Because there's no sense being awake right now. You will never see me awake before 6 a.m. I simply just don't do it. Absolutely not. There is no reason for that part of the day to exist. I refuse. The only reason that part of the day exists is so you can go fishing. And if you're not fishing, then forget it. Not even worth it. I wish you could break down these crates. We're dehydrated and we're hungry. So let's go ahead and handle that and then we'll break off the episode. I'm going to jump down here and let's drink some water. And so the big operation for today. The big, 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 big operation for today is that we sincerely need to find ourselves firewood. If we can't get our hands on some firewood, we are just toast. The other thing we need to think about is securing our caloric future. And so that's the other thing that's got me a little bit worried. Our food supply is looking a little bit scanty. This game is actually a little bit overbearing when it comes to food. Your chances of starving in under 24 hours by not eating full meals are pretty much non-existent even if you're even if you're just busting your ass it'll take you seven days before you collapse from exhaustion i i know for a fact you can survive for five to seven days without anything to eat and that's chopping firewood working hard every single day you'll make it you won't feel good you'll feel pretty terrible but you'll make it and this game you can actually die within 24 hours if you don't eat and so i think that's something they need to ease up on and in fact they need to make water more critical and food way less critical just from a survival standpoint it just doesn't really make sense that you can die so quickly from starvation. That's one of the only things about this game that I've noticed so far that sort of bugs me, is that you can die from calorie loss, like, within 23 hours. Like, I've eaten so much food right now. The food that we had, I probably personally, in a survival situation, would have spaced that out over the course of a week, a week and a half, and we have to eat all of this within one day, or we just, like, die of starvation. So what we need to do now is we need to use this day wisely. 
We've got a couple hours in front of us. We've got more time to work with than we had yesterday. We need to use this day very, very wisely. Let's check and see if our wolfy friend is around. We ran him off, but a little prick might come back. You never know. Yes, it's the out of doors. Alright, I guess it was loading. Alright, so... I don't see any wolves around. There's a deer over there. Let's forage for wood for a couple hours. Oh my god, that's so many calories burned foraging for wood. Like, that is really, really brutal. We may want to fall back on the possibility of just finding general wood then. Just like things laying around. Unfortunately, you can't walk up to stuff like this and carry it back with you. I wish that you could, but you cannot. Like, there's random scrap wood laying around all over the place and you just can't seem to carry it around with you. I hope that's something that gets added later on. It also is very difficult to find yourselves tinder. How cold are we right now? Pretty cold, in fact. I'm going to try and go easy on my caloric supply at the moment by walking everywhere. I'm going to need some first aid soon. But in fact, I think I'm going to break the episode off right here. So my name is Splattercat. This game is called The Long Dark, and it's a survival game that I like a lot. If we end up dying, I'm just going to play a couple of run-throughs, and we'll just see how well we can survive over multiple playthroughs. This is mostly blind for me. I do know a little bit about the game, and I've played it a couple hours beforehand, just enough to familiarize myself with the various controls, like whipping out the... Okay, so we got a wolf over there. So this might not be the wisest idea. Has he seen me? I don't really know what their aggro range is. But anyways, I'm going to break the episode off right here. I will see you all in the next episode. Take care of everybody, and as always, hi-do.